Well, when you go to your assignments, many situations are going to test your humility. And I know that you brothers and sisters are going to pass the test. The branch asks you to work on a project. And deep down, you don't quite agree with it. Deep down, you really wonder if it's going to work. And you wonder if it's not going to be a waste of your time. But you're not going to put it on the back burner and say, well, I'll get to it someday if I get time. You're not going to do that. You're going to put heart and soul into the project. You're going to pray to Jehovah to bless the project, the project that you didn't quite agree with. Or if you're asked to make a recommendation and you favor one option over another, humility is going to move you to present all of the options, all of the pros and cons equally. You're not going to slant things, thinking, well, you know, uh, I'm going to have to help these brothers to make this decision, so I'll put a really heavy weight on the pros and I'm going to make it really light on the cons. Don't do that. I know that you're going to present everything honestly and you're going to recognize that it's the Holy Spirit that helps brothers to make decisions. Trust the Spirit to move the brothers to do the right thing. Use the force, Gilead graduates. <laughs> Follow the leanings of the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit guide you is the message from David Splain in the 151st Gilead graduation. I couldn't help but watch this and just be amazed at how overt and blatant the control is here. David Splain, as much as saying, you may not agree with it, you may think it's a total waste of time, but support it anyway. If you're asked to do something by the organization, make it happen, make it work. Pray for God's Holy Spirit, be supportive, even if you think it's a bad idea. Isn't that exactly the sort of thinking that's required in any abusive group where people are asked to do things they wouldn't naturally do, including such things as promote the martyrdom of people in medical situations through the refusal of blood transfusions and the covering up of abuse. If you can persuade people that obedience in and of itself is the sole factor, no matter what your personal feelings may be, you can persuade people to do more or less anything. Suppose you sisters are working on a team, or you brothers are working on a body of elders. I know that not even in your heart of hearts, you're going to think that you have the best judgment on the team, and that, well, you can listen politely to the expressions of others, but really, uh, yours is the only sensible conclusion, and we hope that the brothers and sisters are going to go along with us. You're not going to think that because nobody's right all the time. Uh, Jehovah's Spirit can work on any member of the team. Don't get discouraged if every suggestion you make in a meeting gets shot down. It happens to the best of us. And there will be other meetings, and hopefully some of them will go better for you. Don't get discouraged. And don't decide, well, I'm not going to say anything anymore. I'm not going to contribute anymore. Be humble and uh, recognize that uh, at times we may make suggestions that don't make very much sense. I certainly, I certainly appreciate the kind way the governing body deals with me with some of my lame brain suggestions. Can you elaborate, David Splain? Can you give us some examples of suggestions of yours that have been shot down by the rest of the governing body for being silly? I'd love to know exactly what he's referring to of course he's never going to say he's never going to give any actual examples if you ask me this part on the end was just meant to feign self-deprecation and remind the graduates of his position one thing i've noticed governing body members like to do 
is weave into their talks occasionally reminders of the fact that they are governing body members. And that's a perfect example in my mind of him just saying something that alludes to his power, alludes to his position. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. Maybe David Splane is humble after all. But that's what I'm seeing there. And I also find it very interesting that in these concluding remarks in David Splane's talk, David Splane is using very interesting language. He's not just saying, do this, do that, or don't do this. He's saying things like, I know you won't do this, or you're not going to do this, which for me is just a bit more coercive. It's not just about whether something's right or wrong. It's about living up to his personal expectations. I know, David Splain, that you would never do this. And the idea being, of course, that Gilead graduates don't want to disappoint him, don't want to fail him in any way, because he's David Splain. He's a governing body member. Thank you.